Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a video on do chess players resign too early? These are the results of a little poll I attached to video number 276, which was on the Game of the Year 2017, played by the Chinese Grandmaster Ding Liren. One question that came up at the end of that game was, did Ding Liren's opponent resign too early? Why did he not let Ding Liren show the beautiful checkmate that was on the board that would have made the game even more beautiful and also it would have shown to people who are not that strong who cannot calculate those variations themselves show them the beauty of chess by showing them the checkmate at the end of the game I asked the question should grandmasters always play until checkmate and I put in three possible answers and it was interesting to see that the viewers from Chester Impress had a 50% split between yes they should always play until checkmate and only if it's a beautiful mate but nobody said that they don't have to play on that was an interesting result the english grandmaster nigel short wrote about this topic in new in chess well not just about the checkmate but any other beautiful combination variation should be shown at the end of the game instead of one of the players resigning he wrote in new in chess magazine the aim of this article is just to remind people what attracted us to chess in the first place. For me, at least, it was because, at its best, it is a game of sublime beauty. And if the only price we need to pay for sharing in that collective joy is by showing a little over-the-board courtesy, or by allowing our opponents to demonstrate their artistry, it is not too much to ask, is it? And Nigel Short gave a nice example of something that happened in one of his games and I'll show that game in this video. It was a game played on the 17th of October 2017 in a tournament on the Philippines which Short won with eight points out of nine games and this is his game from round seven where Nigel Short was white against the unrated Denmark Mangao from the Philippines. Short opened d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6, Bishop g5, Bishop g7, Knight bd2, and here the main moves according to the theory are either castling or d7, d5, but black decided on b6. e4 from short, Bishop b7, now the e4 pawn is attacked twice by Bishop and Knight, and only protected by the Knight, so White has to do something with that, and he played e5. Knight e4, those knights were swapped, and bishop d3. Here Mangawa thought for a long time and decided to take on d3. Short took back with the queen, and d5. Here the grandmaster thought for almost 15 minutes, and then decided to castle queenside. Knight c6 developing, black has to develop, white is better developed, black still has to find a safe haven for his king, and also this bishop is not great, it's biting on granite, and white has a pleasant advantage here. After knight c6, short plate h4, he's going to attack on the king side, and now castling king side is too dangerous for black because white plays h5 and all white's pieces will attack the black king. Black is far from getting any counterplay on the other side of the board, on the queen side, and this is a very good position for white. So Mangawo did, decided not to castle king side, he played h6, which is the best move in this position. Attacking the bishop, and now short thought for over 27 minutes. The engine that I use thinks that white should retreat his bishop to either f4 or d2, but short played h5 and sacrifices a piece. That piece was taken by Mangawo and short played h takes g6. Now the engine knows no fear, of course. Black was very worried about his king here, but the engine just says, why does not black not play e6? And let's look at one variation. Rook takes, bishop takes, g takes f7, check, opening up the black king. King takes f7, rook h1, bishop g7, and the engine 
assesses this position as equal. Yes, Black's King is very exposed, but of course, White has sacrificed a piece and this game, this position is in the balance. But it's understandable that Black was worried about this and he decided instead of playing e6 to play king d7 to try and run away with his king to safety on the queen side. Short took on f7 and now Black played e6 and queen g6 bringing his queen closer to the Black king. He's now attacking the bishop on g7, queen f8 to protect the bishop and knight takes g5. The threat is now to take with the queen on e6 with check and then winning the knight on c6. White has already, white already has a winning position here. The threat is queen takes e6 so Mangao played knight d8 to protect the e6 pawn. f4 Short keeps going forward. Black tried bishop h6. Rook d f1, bringing his last piece to the party. Now all white pieces are attacking. Bishop takes g5, at least swapping one attacker. Short took on h8 first. Queen takes. And now a knee jerk move could be queen g8. But that's a blunder because black has knight takes f7. Protecting the queen. And after queen takes s7 check, bishop e7 is actually black who's better. He's still a piece up. Of course, short did not go for queen g8. He just took the bishop back on g5. Knight c6 from black. Queen f6. Queen h5. g6. Black took on d4. And g7. After 23 moves, white has two connected passed pawns on the 7th rank. Quite amazing. And here, black, Danmask, Mangao, thought for 11 minutes. And Nigel Short writes here in Nuinches, After an excessively long think, during which time I joked the organizers to the organizers that my opponent was perhaps hoping that I would die of a heart attack before his flag fell, my antagonist had tried the last desperate roll of the dice with queen to h7, optimistically dreaming of delivering checkmate on c2. Queen takes c2. Checkmate is now the threat. And Short writes, White now has the glorious, exceptionally rare, and who knows, possibly even unprecedented opportunity to win a miniature with a double consecutive under promotion. And what he's talking about is f8. Knight, check. It's for king, king and queen, so you have to take. And after rook takes f8, we get the same promotion. G takes f8, knight, check. And with that same fork, King c6, knight takes h7, and this game, of course, is winning, easily winning for white, because he's a ton of material up. And Short writes, please note that the first under promotion is the strongest move in the position, and the second is the only one, only move not to lose. I took a second or two to carefully pick up a knight in my right hand in anticipation of executing the killing combination. Unfortunately, before I could physically complete the move, my opponent, to my absolute dismay, had rushed forward in an orgasm of resignation. How dare he spoil my exquisite artistic creation? So in this game, it was not about checkmate, but it's the same idea. It's allowing your opponent to show a beautiful finish of a game for artistic reasons, but also for chess players who are not as strong and cannot calculate all the variations. When they see such a beautiful finish, they might be Become more interested in our game. That short puts his money where his mouth is. He showed 27 years earlier in a game against Grandmaster Jan Timman when he allowed a beautiful finish up to checkmate. But that's the topic of the next video. So maybe short is right and maybe we as chess players are resigning too early. I'll certainly will try and remember that. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment and if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media. You also may want to check out my Chess to Progress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.